Hey guys, welcome back to Battery Hacker. In this video, we're going to break down C-Rate, what it is, and why understanding it is important when you're dealing with batteries. My name is Michael, and my goal is to make solar and battery topics easy for everyone to understand. Whenever you look at a battery's specifications, you'll see a whole list of ratings like nominal voltage, internal resistance, ampere hours, watt hours, and many others. Among these, there's one more term a lot of people overlook, C-rate. C-rate basically tells you how quickly a battery can be charged or discharged. You'll usually see it written in two different styles, the letter C followed by a number, like C20, or A number followed by C, such as 0.05C. Both formats mean the same thing but the way they're written often confuses people. We'll clear that up step by step. C-rate calculations are based on the battery's ampere-hour capacity. To make this easy to understand, we'll use simple examples in the next part, including lead-acid and lithium batteries, so the concept becomes completely clear. Let's start with a simple example using a lead-acid battery. If a battery is rated at 100 ampere hours and marked as C20, it means you take the battery's capacity and divide it by 20. So this battery can be charged or discharged at 5 amps under that rating. Now let's look at a lithium battery example. If a lithium battery is discharged at 1C, you multiply the battery's capacity by 1. So a 100 ampere hour lithium battery can safely deliver 100 amps of current for that 1C discharge rate. To help clear things up further, most charts show C-rate in both styles, for example, C20 and 0.05C. When the number is written before the C, like 5C, you multiply it by the battery's capacity. When the number comes after the C, like C20, you divide the capacity by that number. If we take 5C as an example, you multiply the ampere-hour rating by 5. So a battery with 100 ampere-hours would theoretically be able to handle 500 amps, but only for a very short time, around 12 minutes, before the battery reaches 0% state of charge. This type of high C-rate is not realistic for solar systems. Such extreme discharge rates are usually found in batteries used for things like drones or lithium titanate cells. Now, if we go back to typical solar setups and consider a standard lead acid rating like C20 or 0.05C, that same 100 ampere hour battery can provide 5 amps for 20 hours until fully empty. But in practical use, we never drain lead acid batteries to 0%. So the actual usable time would be about half of that. Lead acid and lithium batteries don't follow the same C-rate rules. Lithium batteries can handle much higher charging and discharging currents because their internal resistance is extremely low compared to lead acid. For example, a popular lithium battery brand like Battleborn lists a charging C-rate of 0.5C, C2, and a discharge rating of 1C. Lead acid batteries, on the other hand, usually come with something like C20, which means they can only be charged or discharged slowly. Lithium batteries also include a built in battery management system, or BMS. The BMS automatically shuts the battery down if the current gets too high. Lead acid batteries do not have this kind of protection, so you have to calculate the load correctly before buying or using them. Let's take a real-world load example. If you have a 100 ampere-hour lead acid battery and you look at the C20 or 0.05C rating, it tells you the battery is meant to supply 5 amps over a long period. But if you try to run a 1,000-watt appliance from a 12-volt inverter, the current draw jumps to around 83 amps. To safely deliver 83 amps, while staying within the C-rate limit, you would need 16 batteries of 100 ampere hours each. You can use fewer batteries, but then every battery will be forced to deliver more current than its rated C-rate, 
which reduces its usable capacity. Lithium batteries don't face this limitation as much because they support higher current draw and have a BMS to protect them. Most lithium batteries can also supply a short surge of around 2C for a few seconds, depending on the chemistry. Now let's talk about something most people overlook. When a lead acid battery is discharged at a rate higher than its C rating, its effective capacity drops. This happens because more heat is generated and internal resistance increases, making the battery less efficient. If you check the discharge graph for any good lead acid battery, you'll see that higher C rates lead to lower usable ampere hours. That's why it's important to know the recommended charge and discharge C rates before buying a battery for your solar setup. Lithium batteries generally support higher C rates, while lead acid batteries must be used within their limits to avoid premature capacity loss. I hope this explanation gave you a clear understanding of how C rates work and how they affect your battery performance. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and continue learning more about off-grid solar power.